Hello my quilting friends! My name is Leah Day and welcome to this free quilt pattern tutorial. So today I want to teach you how to piece this stack and whack fractured four patch. It is a super easy quilt block you can piece using fat quarters. So let's get started slicing up our fabrics so we can create this beautiful quilt together. So here is our stack and whack wonky four patch and I love how this came out. This is gonna be a great use of fabrics that you really love, the fabrics that you just have a hard time slicing up. You're gonna keep them in nice big chunky pieces. And the other great thing is this is going to use up fat quarters. You basically don't have to do any prep to them at all uh, other than give them a wash, give them a starch, give them a press so that way the fabric is nice and stiff and stable and easy to work with. Now I've spread out my fat quarters and I've got four layers here all stacked up and I did uh, select the colors kind of carefully. So I made sure that I had contrasting, at least two sets of contrasting prints and they are all face up. So that way, whenever I go to put my four patches together, I'm gonna to get a nice variety within those color combinations and they're all face up so they'll piece together nicely. Now on my little mini cutting mat that I've got here, I have set up and taped, uh, placed a little bit of masking tape here and here, and that's just so between the different blocks I have some level of consistency. It doesn't have to be super consistent. They can all be different, that's fine. Uh, but I wanna be able to slice through all four layers all at once. So I'm lining up an extra long ruler all the way across. I'm gonna press firmly and cut across. And I'm left-handed. So I always cut with my left hand and just make sure that that has cut nicely all the way through. I just give it a little nudge over. And then I'm on the corner of my table here, so I'm just going to walk around it so that way I can make the second cut. And again, I'm just lining up my ruler with that tape where I've marked on the tape. And I'm gonna again press firmly and cut right across. When you're cutting that long cut, you might have to shift your hand just a little bit as you're making that entire cut. There we go. So that is all the cutting you need to do. Uh, as you can see, I did not trim up the edges of my fat quarters and they're a little bit frayed. That's okay. We'll do the trimming after we do the piecing. So at this stage, let's pull out our blocks. We can make four blocks from what we just cut. And what we're gonna do is just simply lift off one set of colors. So all I'm gonna do is just pick up that polka dotted pink and here is our first block. I'm going to take this polka dotted pink and this ice blue, flip over that ice blue. That's gonna be the first seam that I stitch and then flip over again that polka dotted pink with that ice blue and that'll be the second seam that I stitch. And if you're feeling just a little bit like, oh, okay, you might get confused uh, when you get to the machine, grab some clips or some pens, give yourself a little clip there so that way you know exactly what seam you're stitching, you know, cause you might get to the machine and get a little bit flipped around. So there we go, we've got those clipped. Now I could do another polka dotted pink in that ice blue or I could do this pretty color of pink and this blue. So that's what I think I'm gonna do. I'm gonna flip this over and clip and flip this over and clip again. So I hope you can see just how fast this is. All you do is whack, <laughs> slice right across your fat quarters. And then it's just a matter of stacking up your pieces so you know what colors are gonna go with what. And you know, you could definitely play around with this. You could do uh, match up the blues if you wanted to. I really like the idea of doing strong color contrasts with this particular quilt. So that's why I'm always selecting one pink and one blue fabric to go together. And these clips are gonna come in really handy when I get to the machine. Now I have one set of cuts left over. How did that happen? Well, remember I pulled that polka dot off the top just to get it out of my way. And now I bring that back and that is my last set. That's my last block going together. So I'll clip this, we'll go to the machine and begin stitching our four patches together. So I'm here at my machine, I'll remove that clip and that just helps me remember what seam I'm gonna stitch. 
And now I'm just gonna slide this right underneath my presser foot and start stitching. And really the only effort here is just making sure that you piece a nice accurate quarter inch seam and that those edges stay in nice alignment. Uh, now this is a wonky seam. It is not straight to the grain line of the fabric. So be careful, don't, uh, don't start pulling or tugging on it. Uh, really let it, let it just feed gently through the machine. Let the machine do the work. Now, as far as the stitch length, I've set my length to 1.5 millimeters. That produces a nice, tight, consistent stitch. So that way it's going to be really secure when I stitch all of my blocks together. And that also allows me to press my seam allowances open. Okay, so now I'm gonna grab the second set of blocks. And I like to piece, always try and, and piece from the inside of the block to the outside. And this helps make sure that that seam is nice and straight, but we're gonna actually true these up. So it's not a really big deal. If you end up with really wonky pieces that none of the edges are really lining up, don't worry about it. We're gonna trim that up at the end, <laughs> so don't worry. So here I have taken my pieces and I am finger pressing that seam allowance nice and flat and open. Then I'm gonna hit it with my hot dry iron. There we go. And you can see I'm working on a little mini pressing board here. I actually built this board with plywood and uh, cotton canvas and cotton batting. And you can find another tutorial on how to build a pressing board like this at leahday.com slash press. I really think having a pressing board like this is super essential for piecing quilts accurately because there's really no comparison. Ironing boards are just too squishy and your fabric starts to shift and move on you and a pressing board allows you to press, keeps everything nice and stable. So now let's arrange our blocks as if we're putting it together to make our four patch. And the thing we're looking for here is just how smooth this edge is, because obviously if one fabric's kind of shifted out this way and one fabric's down this way, that's gonna be hard to stitch that seam accurately. So the best thing to do is just go on ahead and overlap these pieces together, just like so. And we're just going to give it a trim. And I'm left-handed, so I actually need to take this and flip it over. So that way I can make this cut with my left hand. So what we're doing here is we're just trimming off this edge. You know, if those uh, edges of the fabric didn't come out just exactly right, then this is going to ensure you have a nice straight edge to stitch these pieces together with. So here we go. And it really is a habit to get into to always cut with your dominant hand, even if that means you have to rotate the pieces around a little bit, just always make sure that you're cutting with that dominant hand, it's always gonna ensure it's a better cut. There we go. So we've got our pieces sliced up and we want to try <laughs> and get that join in the center. So here's what I do. I'm gonna overlap these just like so. And then I'm gonna pull back on that edge a quarter inch and I'm just eyeballing that quarter inch. If you wanna take a ruler to it and measure it, that's great. But you know, I'm just eyeballing that. And so I'm folding it over and I'm gonna shift it to where, where that's a quarter of an inch from the edge, I'm lining that up with the opposite seam. And I'm just gonna fold that back over and place a clip. Now, if I really wanted that to come out just exactly, absolutely perfect, then I would actually pin that with a pen. I probably pin down the line, but I'm not too worried. You know, this is a fun, fast quilt. So I'm just gonna clip it and let's go stitch it together. So here at my machine, I've got that clip in place in the middle of the block, holding those pieces together. And you may find the edges of your pieces are really far off. Don't worry about that. If you've clipped it and you know that that's accurate in the middle and you're gonna get your nice join, then don't worry about what the edges are doing. Remember, we didn't trim up the edges of the fat quarters in the first place. And the main reason I didn't do that is because I knew we were gonna lose fabric uh, anyway, and it's gonna be a wonky edge anyway. So I think by doing it this way, you're gonna lose the least amount of fabric when you trim up your blocks at the very end. Okay, here we go. And remember, this is kind of a wonky grain line. We're not, we're not on the bias, we're not straight a grain. <laughs> so don't wanna be aggressive with this. Just let the fabrics feed gently into the machine. Let the machine and the feed dogs do the work. You can see I already went over that join, moved my clip, and now it's just 
the easy part of the seam, just making sure that those fabrics stay in nice alignment and stay lined up over here with the quarter inch patchwork foot with that edge. There we go. And you can see again, that end is not lining up at all. That's okay. Now we're gonna trim up our blocks and make it nice and square. So I gave this seam a good finger press open and now you can see just how nice and flat that turned out. And my join matched up just exactly right. That makes me happy. <laughs> that doesn't always happen, but you know, it's nice to celebrate when it does. So there we go. I have my four patch pieced. Now let's turn this into an actual square. Uh, I'm gonna turn this into a 16 inch square. Let's see if I can get 16 inches out of it. Ooh, just exactly, maybe, maybe not. I've got some frayed edge over here and a little bit of frayed edge over here. So I think that getting 16 inches is gonna be a bit of a squeeze. So instead, let's go on ahead and go for uh, 15 and a half instead. You know, whenever you're working with big supersized blocks, you kind of just have to figure out what you can get consistently out of all of them. And I think 15 and a half is gonna be great. It's still gonna give us a nice big block. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to trim off this edge first. Remember, I'm left-handed, so I'm always gonna be working my way around that way. Now you can rotate the mat when you're working on a small mat, or you can just simply rotate the block. So that's what I'm gonna do. And at this stage, I'm going to use that cut edge, that edge I just trimmed off as a guide. So I'm gonna line up a thin line on this ruler with that edge. Just lining that up nicely so it's nice and straight and square. Now everything's lined up nicely, so I just press firmly and cut right across. There we go. And I do think it makes it easier to cut these big blocks with a big ruler. If you don't have one though, you can always buddy up two rulers side by side. That can work well too. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed learning how to piece this fractured four patch with me today. This is a lot of fun and these big chunky super sized blocks are going to piece up a nice size quilt in short order. You will need four fat quarters for every four blocks you create. And you can mix up those colors quite a bit. Uh, I like it when there's a, a dominant color, you know, like the blue and the pink, and you can sign a, split it up that way. And you can see how I arranged all of the corners together here, and that kind of creates a flower shape. And here you can see it in pink. So you can take that randomness that you get from the fractured four patch shape and it's gonna end up being totally random. It's gonna be different with every block, uh, but then the way you arrange it can kind of bring a little bit more order to your quilt. The key with this is just to have fun and understand that this is a great way of using up fabric that you're feeling a little precious about. It's really important to you and you don't wanna cut it up in too small a pieces. So this is gonna be a great way to showcase those favorite fabrics, be able to get them into a quilt so you can really enjoy them in your home or on your bed. So I hope that you'll enjoy making a stack and whack fractured four patch. Come and find more free quilt patterns that I've created and shared in videos at leahday.com slash free. Until next time, let's go quilts.